Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the next episode of Premiere Podcasts and BBS Film Productions Final Cuts Podcast. Um, we have a special guest today and a friend of ours and client. His name is Robert Marks. He is the co-founder of Projector, and I'm sure many other things he will tell us about shortly. Robert, great to have you on our show. Ah, uh, Dan, thanks so much. Great to be here. Yeah. And that, I'm special, but I appreciate the words. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what uh, what you're doing now and uh, a little bit about yourself and go from there. Sure. Well, I'm a, been an entrepreneur since uh, 1988, so about 35 years right now. Uh, I started three companies. Projector is my third one, which I actually started during the pandemic. Pretty sure that wouldn't have even happened if it wasn't for the pandemic, but we needed things to do. And in every one of my business I've started, I've identified uh, mostly a problem with an opportunity and kind of went for it, not really knowing the industry I jumped in when I did it and figuring things out to solve problems and, and try and get traction through bringing on clients once the product's ready. Everything's always been in tech. Tech is very complicated. Tech is very troublesome. Tech always has bugs, issues, problems. Things will always go wrong. And your clients really rely on those services. So it's it's at times very stressful. But so far, the first two businesses worked out great, which we could delve into. And projectors still, we actually call our product in beta. Uh, we spent two and a half years developing it. It works. It works really well. We are in the market. We now have clients on every continent on the planet. Uh, but we're still in beta and we're hoping for an official launch, hopefully within about four to six weeks. Yeah, it's been really exciting. You know, we had a little part of helping with the video aspect of it. And uh, it's a really unique product that I, we look forward to getting out. We can talk a little bit more about that. Um, but I guess before that, I kind of want to find out how you got started in business and what you, you know, where you got to be where you are. Well, um, my father was an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, very um, tech oriented. And very ahead of his time on what I'll call um, subscription services or reoccurring revenue models. So today we're used to cell phones reoccurring, Netflix reoccurring. Uh, we know all about software as a service or SaaS businesses where we used to buy Microsoft Office and now you pay a monthly fee to have Microsoft Office. Everything's gone that way. My father was that way back into the mid 1970s. He was in the burglar and fire alarm business. So I got but one thing that was great back then that doesn't happen as much now is we had a lot of freedom when we were young, but we always had family dinner together. And our family topic was pretty much my dad sat down and talked about his business and his trials and tribulations for an hour. And then and, and you work there. When I'm 13, 14, 15, I'm in the stock room. Or I would go out with his uh, technicians who were installing fire and burglar systems and pulling wires through big buildings. And then hanging out with these guys and going to fast food restaurants with them and listening to their stories. What is a funny right? cigarettes during lunch inside of Wendy's, which is a different world. Uh, <laughs> Great. So I really had that. And what I came from that is that I didn't want that life and world. I saw the stress he was under. I saw how tough business was running every aspect to, you know, covering the bills, covering payroll, covering taxes. Uh, but it was soon into my career, about two years, eight months, that I realized I just didn't love working for other people and working for other people's dreams. Uh, and maybe that would have been different if I worked for people who I felt cared about my dreams, but that's rare to find too. Uh, so uh, it was uh, way back in the really early 90s, right about in 89, 90, that um, cell phones were really starting to take off as a business person's tool. And I thought, wow, I should sell cell phones and we're charging so much per month. And if I can get a monthly residual and put out as many phones as I can, uh, I could build up a nice big, you know, kind of nest egg or residual for myself. And I figured out how to do it and uh, launched a cell phone business. Uh, and that's how I kind of started into being an entrepreneur. Timing was good there, huh? Well, yes and no. It was yeah. really good. That industry commoditized. And I, I went from, used to make money selling the phone and you'd have about 36% margin on a client spending $350 a month. And within five years, you had a, subsidize the equipment so lose money up front margins went down to 19 percent, and the average biller was 150 dollars a month so oh, you're just treading water and it's, it's because you know it was a business person's tool when i started and by the time i ended there were phones on the shelves at walmart it just became really commoditized but it was a great experience the good news is i didn't lose money 
I just didn't really make any money and, and put in five years, but it was a great experience and it helped me when I got to the, start another business. Okay. And what was that? So that was uh, becoming an internet service provider. Okay. So his cell phone business was taking off the internet, uh, came to play as well. Mm-hmm. And I was tech savvy enough. I, you know, started using the internet right as it first came, you know, access in, in probably early, mid 1992. Uh, and it was, you know, it was email. It was slow. Internet browsing was slow. If you, if you wanted to go get a domain name, you probably could register something like toyota.com or get ibm.com because no one had thought that they needed it yet. Yeah. So it was really early days. Uh, but the problem there was that businesses, which we're still doing primarily, I'd say the small to medium sized business, 25 to say 350 employees, they were still doing business by phone. Phone was 99% of their business, but they needed connectivity to the internet. And back then, internet was extremely expensive for a dedicated, solid connection. Uh, and there was not really many good choices for a dedicated connection. And I came up with a solution to go to businesses in Northeast Ohio with a low price, reliable internet connection. And I started, it was a B2B, so I only sold to businesses. I wasn't selling people dial up and other consumer type products. Yeah. Uh, and that really took off well. I really solved the problem in the marketplace. You'd go into a law firm that had 200 associates and everyone's email was a dot as a was a hotmail uh, email, oh, man. and they were sharing fifteen AOL dial up lines. So oh. it was a it was a great world, and I really solved solutions. and And then with the uh, with with voice over IP services becoming more viable in the early two thousands, I was able to then become a phone company. And then there was cloud computing and data center uh, um, facilities that I was able to uh, provide those services. So we really became a nice company. And that one was a good hit. That one, I had a nice exit in December of 2015 and actually declared I was retired. I became a adjunct professor down at Ashland University. I'm actually at John Carroll University now teaching entrepreneurship, but I really thought I was retired from the business world. Yeah, I had an idea, the pandemic came and I pursued that idea. And that's what Projector is, is for, I guess, round three. Nice, nice. So fast forward to now, uh, tell everybody what Projector is. I think it's a great idea. Well, thank you. Projector is a video streaming service. And what happens when you start a company is you think you know exactly what you are and then you can get derailed or people could say, wow, I wish you could do this. I wish I could do that. And you yeah. you, you, you kind of try and figure out what you really are. And then after about a year or two, you come back full circle to what your original idea was. Mm-hmm. To me, Projector is a video streaming service. If you know Netflix, you know what a video streaming service is. Uh, there's so many different video streaming apps now. What's the content on Projector? It's the one thing you can't stream right now. So if you do stream at home and you have a device, say an Apple TV or an Amazon Fire or Roku, there's many different devices. Uh, you're used to all these um, uh, devices and or all these streaming apps and you could watch movies and television, documentaries. Now we all stream live, at least my family streams live and people are every day. The one thing you can't stream is yourself, your home movies. Nowhere on Hulu, Paramount, Peacock, HBO Max, Disney Plus are you going to find your family vacation, your wedding, your honeymoon, the birth of your children. And what bothered me is I've been married for 27 years. I've known my wife 30 years. We have four children, two off the payroll. Boom. (laughs) And how do you measure all that? Well, I measure it in gigabytes. I have 700 gigabytes of home movies and photos. And guess where they sit? On hard drives and cloud drives, and no one ever sees them. And social media is great for a little one here and there. But if my wife wanted to go back and watch uh, my son Ryan's first birthday in uh, the summer of the year 2000, she's not going to find it anywhere. She's not going to go into my hard drives. But why Why can she take a remote control and watch Bridgerton or watch Game of Thrones or watch HGTV all day? Why can't she, with three clicks, watch Ryan's birthday? So I thought, how about a do-it-yourself video streaming app where you upload your content and it looks and feels like Netflix or Disney Plus, and it's there on your TV the same way Netflix is always on your TV. And that was the concept. And it's it's really about that viewing experience. Um, there's already great ways to organize and store uh, and archive your, your collection. We print photo albums so we can just view it. Some of us have those old digital photo frames, remember those, and you send a picture to it and it changes. 
That's for viewing. Uh, you put something on a mug. This is the Cleveland Browns cup, but you know, you see the Browns or you could see your dog on a coffee mug. We have those around the house uh, that I should have grabbed today for this, for this talk. Um, so that's what projector is. It's just another f- digital photo frame. It's another photo album book. If you ever print a picture on, on your wall, sometimes they do these beautiful canvases or excuse me, they print things on metal, which are really cool. Yeah. Projectors not on your TV. It's it's a way to finally, easily enjoy viewing your home movies. That's really the concept. Yeah. And while there are other avenues like YouTube and Vimeo uh, or Airplane from your phone, what everyone seems to realize once they touch projector is all that stuff is difficult. All that stuff's a hassle or most people in the family won't do it. My wife will sit in front of the TV and she'll watch home movies now things that she didn't have access to uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. She didn't even remember that I videotaped our honeymoon until I put it up on our projector account. And now she watch our honeymoon and she thinks it's hilarious, but she could at least access it. Yeah, plus it's private. You know, when you put it on YouTube, anybody can see it, you know, for the most part, you know, if they put it up there, uh, which is great, you know, so it's good stuff. Nice. Well, I did, I do want to dash social media. It has its purpose. Sure. sure. Uh, but- it's not where you're going to put your home movies to watch the way you would look at a photo album book uh, or you'd watch Netflix. Yeah. And you wouldn't have commercials playing in between, I'm assuming, you know? Yeah. yeah right. Great. Yes. A lot of limitations with them. And, you know, if, yeah. if, if, if YouTube or social media would work, I wouldn't have had to create projector, but there really was nothing else out there. So that's why I had to create it. Yeah. And really this could be used for pretty much anybody, right? I mean, you're just worldwide. They could do this for the most part. Right. So correct. It's a, you know, it's a in the cloud type product and anyone can subscribe from anywhere in the world. What we learned is um, I'm very organized with my home movies and photo collection. I'm pretty technical. If a product like projector existed, excuse me, and I would have found it, I would have used it. Yeah. Most people have a large collection. Some of that collection still sits in boxes and VHS tapes and thumb drives and even eight millimeter reels, reels from their parents uh, or, or even from themselves if they're a little older. Um, but um, I was very organized. The people who have these large collections, they may have them on a, um, an old Apple Mac from 2014, an old laptop from 2009, again, a box of stuff. They have all their stuff in their phone and then they have stuff in their significant other's phone and their children's phone. And it's really daunting for them to think that they could organize it and then sit down and work with projector. Yeah. What I didn't know when I started the company, and it's wonderful now that I found this, is there are literally thousands of people and businesses who are in the business of helping families with their home movie collection. They help them organize it. They help them go through all the duplicates. They make sure that they have a good master plan for backup, for succession planning. Uh, they'll make photo album books, digital photo frame books, print things on the wall. And so when I found those groups and I showed them, well, let me show you the idea of giving each of your clients their own video streaming app. They went crazy. So now that's how I'm distributing. So I've already signed up several dozen of them in a beta test and I have hundreds of them begging me to allow them to use the platform. But again, we're still in this early beta. Yeah. Technology's tough. Technology has bugs. We're working through most of them. And we think we're at the point where we're about to open up the floodgates and we will have thousands of people across the globe. I mean, right now there's people creating accounts for me in South Africa, in Australia, in Serbia, in Germany, in the UK. Yeah. Most most of them, are, the rest are in the States, a lot, a lot in Canada too. And that's how we're going to sell it. So nothing stops somebody from going to our website at Projector Stream, projectorstream.com. Uh, and you can create their own account, but you can also reach one of these personal uh, professionals. And it's also retailers. There's a lot of retailers around the uh, uh, the world are camera stores and video transfer type services. They're also going to be selling projector. And that's really how we think we're going to get uh, traction and get this product to the world. Yeah. Which leads me to my next question. Um, so I know how this has affected uh, your business, but maybe you can tell me how video has affected your marketing for this and, and how you utilize that within within your company. Well, video is telling a story. 
And it's a way to tell a story in a 30, 40, 50 second, one minute, maybe at the most two minute story. And projector sounds easy. It's a, it's a video streaming app. It's Netflix. And people do not get it. They really need that video to understand what we're trying to sell. And to be able to create a video of a family enjoying projector just awakens up the audience and says, oh my gosh, I get that and I want it. And then there's a lot of nuance to it. There's an uploading flow uh, for our product. There are ways to create your projector. There's a lot of nuance to it. And we make a series of videos. One thing that your company was so great with us is helping us make a series of tutorials because there's different functionality. Not every client wants to use every functionality. So you break it out into a series of one and two minute videos and they can watch it. How to download um, an app on say an Amazon Fire or Roku device. Everyone has that, but when they bought the Roku device, it already had Netflix and it already had maybe YouTube TV and it already had HBO on it. Or maybe their son came over and added uh, Amazon Prime video, uh, but they don't know how to do it. So you have to use video for that. And having a pop-up on your website, having a pop-up on your mobile app, Versus people trying to go through with their limited attention span and try and understand a new concept is very difficult. But when a pop-up video comes and in 30, 40, 50 seconds, they're like, wow, that's incredible. That's the power of video. And I I could probably commission you to make about 200 videos a year and we still wouldn't make enough for all the need because video is so powerful. And it's so funny, you have to really set it for the lowest common denominator, you know, no matter what it is. You know, we had a product in the 80s and 90s. It was a screensaver, a stress reduction screensaver, which we got it rolled out into Office Max. And we made the mistake of putting a tech support number on there. <laughs> and it shocked me how many people were calling over questions like when the remember CDs, when they'd come out, you know, the CD holders, you know, what do I do with this cup holder that's coming out of my computer? You know, just crazy stuff like that. You know, it's like, what do you do? But you, um, don't, you do not put a cup on it. That's what you do. You, that's that's right. it. Don't close it. It's well, just for decoration. Uh, it, it, it's truly amazing. You know, we have, um, you know, this is a, you know, mass consumer product. So most of it's online through email support and online chat. And it is amazing the questions you get. And what we do now to solve that is we send them links to the videos you've made. So yeah. how do I do this? Follow this link and we say thank you. Um, because you have to go that, I guess, I guess that's somewhat friendly, the lowest common denominator, but that's what you're dealing with. It's true. It's absolutely true. Um, yeah. Okay. So what do you think the future of this industry is going to be? You know, if you, if you were looking ahead, you know, five years, let's say. Well, there's many different aspects to that. So, you know, what we're focused on right now, because we believe streaming technology is here for a while to say that there's not going to be anything after streaming technology would have been to say there's nothing after over the airwave TV or cable TV or satellite TV. But we do certainly believe over the next five years. So we're focused on getting subscriptions, getting mass. We're the first to market to so you can have a video streaming app, which by the way, a video streaming app that also plays slideshows. Um, how many people could know how to play a slideshow on their TV? Well, because of projector, my 84-year-old mother with her Roku TV can now play a slideshow. It's like playing a Netflix movie. Yeah. So um, we believe that we've got to get to market and get subscription to service. Um, what I do know is that whatever that next deliverable is, if it's, there's something beyond streaming and streaming's amazing. I mean, the internet and streaming and these devices for me personally, what a great way to watch TV. We cut the cord in 2000, I think 16. So we've been streaming now exclusively with no cable satellite or over the air for seven years. Yeah. And the fact that it allows you to have an app on any TV and any place or any device you're at, right? Because it's all cloud based, is so wonderful. Uh, we feel we've got to get our market share. If a technology changes, there's no reason why, just like CBS could broadcast over the air, they could broadcast on a streaming app, they could broadcast on cable, they could broadcast on satellite. We should be able to do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, what I don't know is where this is truly going. I had a personal need. 700 gigabytes and my family not only couldn't see it was never going to see it and perhaps it was going to go by the wayside because 
if I left the planet tomorrow, what happens to my hard drive and my cloud drives? Who's going in there and grabbing this stuff? So Projector also allows things to survive, let alone be viewed. Um, that's why I built Projector. Where is it going? I don't know. I know that a product like this should exist. Now, there were some alternatives. Um, there's some companies where you could build kind of a, call it a local server where it will play movies, home movies and TV shows locally, and you could play them on maybe one TV or a couple in the house. That wasn't going to satisfy me. And my family was never going to use it. Yeah. They needed to see the app sitting right next to Netflix or one of the other streaming apps they use. So I don't know where the future goes because I'm in the early stages. I technically haven't even officially launched, even though we have hundreds of people on the platform and paying us to use the platform. Yeah. Uh, but my goal is that in five years, I have 50,000 subscribers. Uh, that's a big number, but it's a tiny number in relation to the 7 billion people on the planet or the amount of subscribers. You know, 50,000 is a, is, a, is a sneeze for Netflix. You know, they can gain or lose 50,000 in a week um, or maybe in a day. Um, so, but that's my goal. Awesome. Awesome. So somebody starting out in your business or a similar business, what, what advice would you give them? I'll put it this way. I, there's so much I didn't know. Like how hard can it be to have a video streaming app? You have a website or a, a mobile app, you upload your content, you you put it in a category, you give it a title, a description, you give it a thumbnail, that's it. And it's just, it's so much more. Um, people stream on primarily Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, Google TV, Samsung Smart TV, LG, uh, smart TVs, their iPad, their iPhone, their Android. Um, every one of those is a development platform and all separate from other ones. Yeah. You have to work with the app stores. Um, the upload process is extremely complicated. Um, development is extremely complicated, extremely expensive and takes forever. Yeah. I could tell my guys, um, I want to you know, add this one feature or, or you got to fix this bug. Oh yeah, we'll have it done uh, you know, mid next month. Wait, 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 wait. This should be a day. You know, no, it's going to be seven, eight weeks because it all ties. So I would tell anyone this is beyond complicated. Um, most people know that when I started talking to people uh, about financing in this and, and talking to private equity companies and angel investors and uh, venture capital funds, they knew what I didn't know there. Then you have the other, the, the other side of the equation, which is maybe even harder, probably significantly harder is acquiring users, getting traction. Yeah. How are you going to get people to use it? Yeah. And of course, I'm like, well, I need it. So that's why I built it. Yeah. Um, there must be millions of people like me, but reaching them if there are people like me. Uh, and then the, the fact that even if they want it, and I think every family should have their own video streaming app for their home movies and their their family legacy, um, are they going to actually do the work? So that's been a big hurdle. So I would tell anybody, always pursue your dreams, believe in yourself, Failure is not just an option. It's going to be a fact. It's going to happen. Uh, but you got to, you know, learn from that, pursue it. And even in our darkest days, whether it was my cell phone company or the internet company or now Projector, we always felt, boy, why did we do this? We always found a way. And, and with Projector, we see a big light at the end of the tunnel right now because we do have this great, vast um, uh, distribution channel. And they're screaming at us to get the product right in their hands. And we're almost done developing the product. So uh, the, my advice is, I, boy, it's not easy. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. I guess. A lot. Uh, Great. So, I, well, first of all, I really appreciate you being on the show today. How can people um, reach you or if they wanted to get into the platform or maybe be an investor or something? Is that still on the table or what? what's going on? Uh, absolutely. On all those things, um, which really exciting for us now is now that we've developed it, we've got incredibly healthy margins. That's talk about things we didn't know. We never thought we could achieve the margins that we can. And we have this distribution channel, way better time to invest than two years ago. Because two years ago, I would have said there's a 99.9% .9 chance you're going to lose your money. Now I think it's down to about a 40% chance you'll lose your money. So not, not so bad for an, for, for an investor who's yeah. looking for big returns. Uh, and we have a great story to tell. Uh, my email, <clears throat> and we're going with projectorstream.com, kind of making sure people understand we're a streaming service. 
I'm Robert at projectorstream.com. I absolutely welcome an email, any thoughts, ideas. Would love to meet, hop on a quick Zoom. You could find me on LinkedIn, Robert Marks. Marks is M-A-R-K-S. You'll see co-founder projector on there. I um I do have a direct business line. I don't know if I want to give phone numbers out here or not, Dan. It's up to you. Uh, but anyone can reach me. Certainly the email is probably the great way to start. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, awesome. Awesome. Well, again, we really appreciate you being on the show today. And I look forward to talking to you in the near future on things. And this will probably go out in a couple of weeks. Awesome, Dan. Thanks so much. This was awesome. Great. I'm here. Let's face it, everybody loves to make podcasts and vodcasts, but nobody wants to edit them. Well, except for us. At Premier Podcast Productions, we professionally edit and distribute podcasts and vodcasts for companies around the world. Our process is simple and affordable, allowing you to stay focused on what you do best, developing great content, and building your subscriber base. From recording and editing to final distribution and marketing, we can help every step of the way to make your podcast stand out and get the results it deserves. Contact us today at premierpodcastpros.com to take your podcast to the next level.